President. Today, I'd like to discuss the media's complete misrepresentation of the Republican report on Senator Durbin's Trump investigation, in which my staff participated according to committee rules. Now, I gave an October 7th speech on this subject, and you wouldn't know that anybody read my speech based upon what's been reported on TV. But as I noted in that October 7th speech, Senator Durbin publicly released a Democratic staff report on his investigation. We Republicans did the same thing that very same day. I came to the floor that same day to describe the Republican report. In so doing, I laid out what the available facts and evidence showed within the scope of the inquiry. That scope was from December 14th, 2020 to January 3rd, 2021. But TV seemed to think we were talking about what happened on Capitol Hill on January the 6th. The Durbin investigation ended on January the 3rd, or events leading up to January the 3rd. I say that date rate yet again because many reporters have wrongly conflated this investigation with the January 6, 2021 events here on Capitol. We know all the damage that was done to the Capitol that day. So I want to repeat, the scope of the investigation stopped on January 3rd, not January 6. But you wouldn't know it from the TV reports. I'm not going to rehash my entire speech. I have incorporated it here by reference. However, I will note yet again for the media several key facts. This is not analysis, as I think TV was trying to do, just the facts. So fact one, records indicate that President Trump focus was on quote unquote legitimate complaints and reports of crimes. And those words come from the transcript. Fact two, witnesses testified that President Trump's main focus was making the Justice Department aware of the potential criminal allegations and to ensure the department did its job. Trump's focus then wasn't to direct or order specific investigative steps. And to that point, witnesses said that Trump's focus was on the American people, not himself or his campaign being harmed by what he believed to be widespread election fraud. Fact three, these these witnesses testified under oath that it was not unreasonable for President Trump to question what the Justice Department was doing to investigate election fraud and crime allegations. In fact, one witness testified under oath that Trump had, quote unquote, no impact, those two words, on the department's actions to investigate election allegations. I'd be remiss if I didn't also note that one witness testified under oath that the Justice Department was, quote, dragging their feet and maybe more to keep these investigations from going forward, end of quote. Fact four, my staff read former U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Georgia, B.J. Pack, a press release 
from the Biden administration where Biden set policy for the Justice Department by prohibiting it from using subpoenas for records of reporters in criminal leak investigations. My staff then asked if any president has similar authority to set the department's policy with respect to investigating and reviewing voter fraud and election crime allegations. This witness stated, quote, I would agree that the president has that duty, end of quote. Fact, and the last fact, five. President Trump twice rejected firing acting Attorney General Rosen and twice rejected the notion of sending what's called, quote unquote, the draft Clark letter. Now, after giving you those facts, accordingly, on the basis of this foundational evidence, with respect to the scope of this investigation from December 14, 2020 to January 3, 2021, President Trump sought and followed the advice and also the recommendations of his senior advisors. I note with specific emphasis the fact that he followed their advice and recommendations. This is a crucial fact. The report is entitled, in their own words, it's based on actual witness evidence, not CNN-style partisan analysis. I encourage everyone to read the report and the transcripts and draw your own conclusions. That's how I always approach my investigations in the year that I've been in the United States Senate. Now let's go to how my speech was reported on TV. Some on CNN have said that I showed fealty, fealty to Trump by stating the facts. They call these facts that I just recited delusional. I've never had a problem following the facts wherever they lead, no matter who in power. So I'm going to refer to an investigation I did in the Trump administration, and it involved some people in the Trump and close to Trump, the President Trump. I ran a transcribed interview on Donald Trump Jr. during the Trump administration. That was done as part of my Trump-Russia investigation when I was chairman of the Judiciary Committee, which focused on the June 9, 2016 Trump Tower meeting. I also subpoenaed Paul Manafort to appear at a hearing and provide testimony. Instead of publicly testifying, Manafort voluntarily agreed to an interview with my and then ranking member Finance, Feinstein's staff. But as the ranking member staff then refused to interview him and objected to my staff doing so without them there, that didn't move forward. Notably, the committee never received any, uh, the committee when I was chairman during this investigation I'm talking about, the committee never received any emails from the Democratic National Committee or the Clinton campaign, even though we repeatedly asked for them. Of course, the Democrats wouldn't support subpoenaing them, and you didn't hear a lot about that from the media, the double standard media. The Trump campaign produced records. Just like there's a cover, coverage vacuum, particularly by CNN of Hunter Biden and James B Biden and their connection with the communist Chinese government, my and Senator Johnson's September 20 report on those financial connections and their uh, potential criminality was attacked as Russian disinformation. Later on, Hunter Biden 
publicly admitted that he was under criminal investigation for financial matters. I don't hear much about that on CNN. In my and Johnson's report, we made clear that based upon deep financial connections between the Biden family and foreign governments, Hunter Biden is a counterintelligence and extortion concern. On that note, recently released emails have opened up the possibility that Joe Biden mixed bank accounts and funds with Hunter Biden. Other emails show that Joe Biden shared office space with individuals connected to the communist Chinese regime. Of course, my and Senator Johnson's report was the first to prove that Hunter Biden, James Biden, and other family members had extensive financial and business relationships with individuals not just connected to the communist Chinese regime, but his intelligence and military services. About that Grassley and Johnson report, Political ran the off-base headline, and I quote, GOP senators, anti-Biden report, repackages old claims, end of quote. In contrast, one of their own reporters, just very recently, confirmed the authenticity of some of Hunter Biden emails for, uh, for a book that he was writing. One Washington Post columnist said, quote, even after accepting disinformation from Russian agents, Johnson and Grassley couldn't come up with anything new or interesting on Hunter Biden. And NPR said about the New York Post Hunter Biden stories, quote, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories, and we don't want to waste the listeners and readers' time on stories that are just pure distractions. Now, compare what I've said, how different Democrat and Republicans are treated, how investigations are done different by Republicans and by Democrats. And then look at the state of journalism today. What I just said is so much for investigative journalism. Investigative journalism died without so much as a whimper. The media attack against the Republican Trump report is essentially an attack on witness testimony received by the committee. Time and again, many in the media have failed to meet the facts head on in order to fit their own biased storyline. So I say to everybody, including journalists that don't want to do hard work, read the testimony of those people that were taken on what went on between December 14th and January the 3rd. Read, read what I say about it. Read what Senator Durbin says, says about it. But at least read the testimony if you're going to make comments distorting what I said on October the 7th. In other words, stop screwing up. I yield the floor. I suggest the absence of a